Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Britt Simon. Um, <clears throat> this is part two, essentially, of a video um, that I'm working on this morning, I've created this morning, um, which is about uh, the process flow of the DV lottery process to explain the process flow. And then, and I've, I've created that video in part one. And then part two is about um, how you schedule your, your, or how you reschedule or move your appointment from one um, from one embassy to another, okay? And this is top of mind for a lot of people because um, a lot of people are concerned about what they saw happening in DV 2021, where a lot of people were unable to move their cases to, um, uh, to, to an appropriate uh, embassy. And obviously there's a lot of political unrest in the world at the moment, and there are some countries where, uh, for instance, in Afghanistan, where the embassy has recently closed, of course, um, and so that pit puts people into a difficult position. So, uh, so I wanted to address uh, particularly how you would move your um, uh, your case from one embassy to another. Um, so uh, I, I just created a video a few minutes ago, which has a timeline. I, I just want to refer to that. Um, so there's a timeline um aspect to when your case is uh is scheduled at, at an interview or at an embassy and when you can change that interview right from one embassy to another and so i just wanted to address that a little bit first and explain that a little bit um there's really a timeline associated with this um during the period of time when you're processing uh where your case is processing kcc control where uh you know where your em embassy is going to be scheduled, where your interview is going to be scheduled, at which embassy, based on a, a really one main thing, which is um, where you live today. Okay, so based on the information that they have in the DS two hundred and sixty, if you say you live in France, then they're going to set up an interview for you in Paris, right? Uh, if you say you live in in um, in some part of England, um, then they're going to set you up for an interview in London because it makes sense, right? Um, and it's based, therefore, on where you live. However, there are some places where uh, the embassies are closed. The Russian embassy, for example, uh, was closed. Um, uh, the diplomats were expelled, and you know, there's a difficult political time. That won't last forever. Um, but right now, there is a situation where the Russian embassy has been closed, right? And there are some other embassies like that. And so what do you do if you live somewhere where they would normally associate you with uh, the Russian embassy, um, but, uh, but that embassy is closed? That's what I want to address, okay? So KCC, base that on where you live. You choose, as you know, you choose in your DS-260 which embassy you would like to be interviewed at. Largely speaking, KCC will ignore that choice that you make, okay? You can only make that choice one time, the first time that you submit the DS-260. You can never change that again, okay? Uh, only KCC can change that choice. You have to ask them to change that choice, and you have to explain to them why you want to change that choice. But regardless of what that choice is, it's not actually the thing that drives your, um, uh, drives your appointment, okay? What it's based on is where you live. And so if you live in an area where... Um, the embassy is closed, it can obviously be a difficult, uh, a difficult thing. But just understand that for the majority of the time, you have to talk to KCC uh, in order to figure out where you're going to be uh, interviewed. Once they have assigned your case uh, to, a, to an embassy, KCC, and actually I've pointed out here, is when they've allocated your case to the embassy, KCC will no longer change your embassy location. And the way they think about it is they've allocated your case to an embassy, whatever embassy that is. Um, it's now up to the embassy to handle your case, to move your case if necessary. So uh, at a certain point, the questions about moving your case from one embassy to another should be directed to the embassy at which you've been scheduled as opposed to KCC. There's a difficult period of time, which I explained on the last uh, video, which is when your case has been allocated to the embassy and before you've received the 2NL, your embassy doesn't know anything about you yet. And so you can contact them, but they don't know anything about you. 
okay? Um, uh, they don't have your case. It's only when the 2NL is sent that your case is electronically transferred to the embassy. And so at that point, they'll know something about your case, but before then, they know nothing. Um, and so, you know, that's the, uh, that's the difficult time. In general, if you needed to move your case at that point, the process is this. Like, this is when you've been scheduled at the embassy. Let's say you've been scheduled at Embassy A, and you want to be scheduled at Embassy B, okay, for whatever reason. It's not just on a whim. It has to be based on some genuine reason. Um, you know, bearing in mind that you were scheduled at Embassy A because of where you lived, right? Now, if you had somehow not updated the fact that you'd moved to another embassy, uh, sorry, another country, which meant that you should now be scheduled at a different embassy, um, that was, you know, something you should let them know about, okay? Uh, if you move countries during uh, the process, you should actually let them know. Um, but uh, um, but if if your embassy, if the embassy A is essentially closed and they tell you, uh, you know, that they can't interview you, <coughs> then you're going to have to um, get them to transfer your case. And this only works, of course, if that embassy is working. Um, you know, if they are and that they have some sort of operational stuff, they can be working and have operations going on, even though they're not doing interviews. That's a, you know, that's that's a possibility. So in that scenario, you can ask them to transfer your case, and basically, you speak to Embassy B, and you say to Embassy B, "I want to be scheduled at your embassy. Can I do that?" If they say yes, you then speak to Embassy A and say. Uh, that embassy, agree, embassy B has agreed to take your case, would they please transfer it? And then they will transfer the case from Embassy A to Embassy B. It's actually even marked on the SEAC system when that's happening. Uh, your case is being transferred. Uh, there's a special status for it. And it's a transfer between embassies. It's a particular thing. It's a process that they have. Um, I don't entirely trust that process, I have to say. I've seen them get it wrong. Uh, and for cases to be sort of stuck in limbo through a miscommunication between the parties, between the two embassies or the embassy and the applicant. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that, that process, but it, it does exist, okay? The process itself exists. Um, now, how about if your embassy is completely non-communicative because the embassy is, is, uh, is closed? So I'm going to address this from um, the point of view of some recognized homeless embassies, and I'll show you the list um, of embassies that the US government recognize have already identified as homeless embassies. Um, and, uh, and in that case, they establish another embassy which will be the sort of the backup plan for, for that embassy. I'll show you that message here. Um, They've recently updated this, very recently. I think this was this week. I think it was on the 21st. Um, and that's why this uh, this particular line is in, in um, this sort of red color. Um, so Russian, Rus the Russian embassy work is now going to be performed by the Warsaw Embassy in Poland. Um, but for other countries that are considered homeless uh, nationalities where there is no embassy in that country. You can see the list here. Um, Cubans should be handled in Georgetown, Eritreans in Addis Ababa and Nairobi. Iranians are supposed to be um, uh, allocated to Abu Dhabi, Ankara and Yerevan. Now Ankara have been saying that they will only take people from within their country. Um, they were saying that during COVID times they had partial justification because of the government, um, the, the government's uh, um, uh, desire to cut down travel. But frankly, the way it was handled was really bizarre. Um, but in any case, Iranians are supposed to be uh, automatically allocated to one of these three embassies based on where in Iran uh, the people live. Uh, Libyans should be scheduled in Tunisia, in Tunis. Uh, Somalis should be scheduled at Nairobi, as should be South Sudanese. Syrians uh, can be scheduled at Amman, Beirut, 
um, um, for Palestinians with Syrian uh, travel documents, right? So either Amman or Beirut. Venezuelans are supposed to be interviewed in Bogota, and generally speaking, that seems to be working out okay. And Yemenis are supposed to be uh, interviewed at Djibouti. Um, now, these are the recognized homeless uh, uh, nationalities. So I think two of the biggest, there may be more, but two of the ones that I recognize to be missing from this list is Iraq, uh, where Baghdad embassy is closed, and Af Afghanistan, where Kabul embassy is closed, right? Um, uh, those two embassies, frankly, should be on this list, and they will be in time. Um, but... Iraq, you know, it's a it's a it's a weird thing that they're missing from here because there's been a long time to establish where Iraqis should be interviewed. Okay, so if you live in these countries, um, and those countries clearly don't have an embassy that's operating, then you can expect to be uh, scheduled at these other embassies, and KCC should do that automatically for you. Okay, there shouldn't be any need for you to contact. If you're Cuban, you should just be scheduled at Georgetown. If you're Russian, you should be scheduled at Warsaw. That's the way it's supposed to work, okay? Um, and, um, uh, sorry, if you're Russian, sorry, if you're living in Russia, I should say. This is not about your nationality. This is about uh, where you live, okay? So if you're living in Russia or if you're living in Cuba, you would be scheduled at Warsaw or Georgetown. That's what that means, okay? It doesn't matter about your nationality, it's about where you live. All right. So those are the homeless. Um, those are the homeless uh, applicants. There's some notes down here. Talks about the homeless physical, physically present in the USA. That obviously you can do adjustment of status. Uh, homeless physical present uh, present in a third country. So this is an interesting point. It says homeless applicants residing in a third country are processed at at the same ID processing post as other nationals of that country. In other words, if you're Cuban and you're, you happen to be living in um, in England, you you should be you should have no problems processing in London. Okay, you don't have to go to Georgetown. Um, you know, you should be processed where you live. Okay, it's based on where you live. Um, post. It goes on to say, and this is important. Post must accept for processing any ID applicant who is physically present uh, in their consular district, provided the applicant has the permission of the host government to remain there legally for a period sufficient to complete processing of the application. That second part catches people out, okay? It's not that you need to have, uh, it's not that you need to present legal paperwork at the, at the interview. You shouldn't have to do that. You may have to, you may be asked about that. But you need to be able to legally reside in that country for a period of time long enough to have your uh, your interview, but also your medical before the interview. Um, so it's difficult to just say, "Look, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to fly into a country and I'll just turn up the day before the embassy uh, the the interview." It won't work like that. You have to be in there long enough um, to do the medical interview in that country and then the interview uh, itself, right? So uh, be careful with that. Um, so, uh, you know, and it does go on to say this does not include persons who have been determined not to be uh, not to be refugees and who are subject to return to their country of origin. Okay, so in other words, if you're a refugee, uh, and a refugee in a third country, then you've established some sort of permission as a refugee of that country, um, in that country. Uh, to to actually be processed in that country, okay? Um, if you are uh, if you're a refugee that has not had permission, if you're a um, prospective refugee or you're seeking asylum but you haven't been given permission to stay in that country, you may have to return to your own country. That's what they say. Um, you you would have to return to your country of origin. Of course, that may be impossible. That may put you in danger for your life. Uh, in which case you can negotiate or, or speak to the embassy and see if they'll accept you, um, you know, and explain the circumstances. And then once you've done that, explain that to KCC, okay? That's the only thing you can do. All right, um, so uh, physically present in the home, yeah. So that's, that's that explanation, okay? Now, 
Let's talk about Afghanistan in particular, because this is one of the countries that is not on this list and has a problem and, and has a recently created problem, right? Um, so let's just quickly look at a couple of things. So firstly, the embassy in, in Afghanistan has suspended operations. And if you read the website of the, Af of the US embassy in Afghanistan, they provide phone numbers here and an email address, etc. But it's all geared towards um, US citizens and their families, right? It's not really geared for um, Afghan citizens looking for an immigrant visa. And this is, this is a problem um, that hasn't been established yet. There's another page here where it talks about, this is also on the embassy in Afghanistan, talks about uh, the suspended operations. And it then goes on to say that they will assist U.S. citizens and their families in uh, in Doha, Qatar, right? So um, that's what they want to do for um, uh, you know for uh, U.S. citizens and existing LPRs, um, but it, it's not addressing uh, adequately the the need of processing people such as DV lottery applicants. So what can you do? Okay, well, you know, essentially you can look at the map, right? And you can see that if you're somewhere around Kabul, for example, Islamabad is a, is a legitimate possible place that you could go for interview in Pakistan. Um, I'm being a bit glib with the map. And I, first and foremost, I want to focus on the fact that you need to be safe. Whatever you do, you need to find and make a plan that's gonna make you safe. So KCC don't have clear instructions from the US government yet to say uh, Afghanis can be given safe travel, say, safe travel to Pakistan or any other country uh, for interviews. And so you've got to be very careful and consider first and foremost your personal safety. But if you feel that you can get to out of the country and get to an interview in Islamabad, for example, then that would be a good choice. And you would contact KCC, preferably before you're allocated to any embassy. Uh, you would contact KCC and explain to them that you are you would normally be interviewing in Afghanistan, in Kabul, but that's not possible, obviously. And so you feel you can travel to Islamabad, and that's where you'd like your, uh, your interview. In my understanding, they will accommodate such requests early enough that KCC can make that change. If somehow you get into the sticky period where you're allocated to Kabul embassy, then you would almost have to wait until uh, Kabul or Afghanistan is added to that list of homeless countries, which is nuts, but that's the way it's, it's supposed to be. So for Afghans and for Iraqis, you need to make the decision to switch your embassy fairly early, and you need to be sure that you can safely travel to that country and take the interview there, as well as the medical interview there, and that you'll be safe during the period of time and you can survive during the period of time uh, while you're waiting for the interview there. Don't go there too early. Um, you know, Don't go there planning to be there for six months or something, unless you've got a good plan on how to survive for that six months. <clears throat> okay, so. That's basically what you have to do. You have to figure out if you're in a position like this, and it could be Afghanistan, or it could be Iraq, <coughs> you're gonna have to look at the map, figure out where you can most safely travel to. And perhaps the route from Kabul to Islamabad is not a safe route for you. And perhaps there is a better place for you to, to get to. Um, in which case, try and figure out uh, you know, a better way of, of, uh, of doing that to a different country. But of course, understand that Iranians also uh, are not able to uh, be interviewed uh, locally. They have to travel as well. And so, you know, don't just go over the border to Iran. You'll be out of the frying pan into the fire, right? Um, so have a look and see where you can safely travel to. Um, now, I would also like to say uh, a lot of people are panicking far too early about this, okay? Um, you don't if if you've got a high case number and you're an Afghan um, selectee, you, you don't need to panic about this yet. You don't need to make uh, arrangements about this yet. You need to sort of 
try and think about the timing of when you would ask to uh, to move, because the U.S. government just this week changed the 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 homeless rules for for Russia. They could do something quite soon for Afghanistan. We don't know, right? And so um, you know, there's no point in you running around like a headless chicken now. Uh, when perhaps in a month or two things will be a bit more clear about where you should be interviewed and that sort of thing. Um, of course, the US government can't make uh, a promise to you that you can be interviewed elsewhere um, whilst the security and safety aspect has not been dealt with yet. And that's why for Iran and Afghanistan, uh, they're not prepared to, to add, uh, add those countries onto this list because uh, they know that Russians, for example, can safely travel to Warsaw, okay? Um, and it's, it's not that that's the nearest country necessarily, but it was about, about sort of safe operation where they would be treated well and that sort of thing. That may not have been the case if they'd have sent them to other countries. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, they chose Warsaw as a place where the Polish government have accepted that some Russians will be traveling over the border into their country in order to take um, uh, interviews and medicals in that country, okay? And the same thing can be said for these other countries, and generally speaking, that works well, although during the COVID times, um, you know, there were lockdowns that stopped even, you know, Cubans from traveling to Georgetown, for example. Um, and so, you know, hopefully the, Q the COVID crisis doesn't get any worse, um, and you will be able to travel. But so do consider your case number. If you've got a high case number, don't try and fix all this now um, because you know things could change over the over the, the next few months. Okay. Um, but when the time comes, um, you know, ideally, if you're in Afghanistan or, or Iran, you should be trying to change your appointment location when it's easier to do that, which is when KCC are involved. That's before you're allocated to an embassy. If you do get allocated to an embassy, hopefully you're being allocated to an embassy in a way or one of the embassies where there is a, 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 a documented plan B. In other words, you can be allocated to the Russian embassy and they will automatically, without you asking, they will move your interview to Warsaw, okay? All right, hopefully that's explained the logic behind uh, the moving, um, moving the embassies, uh, you know, for your interview, etc. cetera. Um, you know, this isn't a perfect uh, process. Um, th this is all very much in the air at the moment because of the political crisis going on, because of the COVID pandemic going on. There's lots of impacts to this process right now. Um, so try and be calm, try and be sensible, try and be pragmatic about what you can and can't do. There's no point, uh, you know, screaming and crying um, that you can't move your interview if you're not going to be current for another six months. It's completely pointless. It's a waste of your time. Um, and, you know, you would be better off just being calm for the time being, okay? Um, if, on the other hand, your case number is, is current very soon, then you should be trying to change and negotiate this with uh, KCC if you're from one of those countries where uh, there is no automatic plan B, okay, if you're not on the homeless country list. All right. Um, okay. Let me know if this has helped. If you need more explanation about this, you can ask me a question at the blog, uh, BritSimonSays.com. You can ask me a question through Twitter. Um, I, you know, for a few of these cases, I'm happy to answer one-to-one -one questions. Generally speaking, I try not to get too involved in individual cases, but for, um, you know, for the people that are particularly in a tight spot right now, I'm happy to answer some of those questions and see if I can help. Okay. Um, but, uh, but use some logic, some common sense, some understanding of this process and try and figure this out for yourselves. And, uh, and hopefully things will be okay. I can't guarantee it, of course, but, um, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to resolve your issues. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye.